Hello guys and welcome to my brand new series, Waihi. Now there's a lot to talk about here, but let's start with the map. The map location is based off of the South Island of New Zealand, solely because it's just really beautiful. There's nice big snowy mountains in the background, there's crystal blue water, some really nice and unique rivers. I've built all of this map myself and it's going to be on the Steam Workshop. I'm going to have a link in the description. There's also a theme that's going to go along with it, so please, if you're going to get the map, don't forget to add the theme to the collection. So the idea with the map was just to create a really realistic map. That's basically it because the backdrop to a city counts for a lot and I really want the city to look good from all angles. So if any of you guys feel like building along, please go and get the map off of the workshop. Dirty H. Why on earth are you starting a new series right before City Skylines 2 is going to drop I hear you ponder? Well, let me tell you. There's two main reasons. Number one is I absolutely need a series to go side by side with Europe in detail. I get burnt out way too quickly on that project without something else that's a little bit different to sink my teeth into. And number two, and this is pure speculation, but I think City Skylines 2 is going to take at least a few months before there's any dedicated assets and mods to create the sorts of cities that I really, really like. I want this series here to fill the void that City Skylines 2 is going to create at least for those first few months. I just absolutely need to get my detailing fix. So as you may have guessed, this city is going to be really detailed. So as mentioned, the map's based on New Zealand, but the city itself, well, that's going to be a little bit different. The biggest influence in terms of the city itself coming from New Zealand will be from Auckland. And in particular, the way that the highway transitions from a rural highway through the suburbs and then eventually into the heart of the downtown. That downtown is going to be massive in this series. I've got big plans for it, and that's the part where... It's going to be based more on American and Canadian cities, in particular Vancouver, San Francisco, New York, and a little bit of LA. You could probably also chuck in the trams from Melbourne, so as you can see, it's going to be a little bit of a mixer. But I have got some very, very cool things planned for the CBD, so stay tuned. So overall, I would say I'm just trying to build the most realistic city I possibly can, and in terms of the suburbs, I know Auckland pretty well, so that's why I'm sort of modelling off it. So rather than starting with the downtown, we're going to start with the suburb. I've got the highway coming through the middle here, you can see. The interchange is a simple interchange that we see right throughout New Zealand, and this is going to be our first little neighbourhood. The terrain around here is absolutely not flat, but what I'm trying to do with this little neighbourhood is keep it in the centre of this valley where it's relatively flat. I don't want it running up any extreme terrain or anything like that. I think it just starts to look not that realistic. There's one main street with two lanes going in each direction coming directly off the roundabout and our grid pattern's following that, much the same way that we started Lake Hayes in City Skylines 2. And I want to use the highway and the edge of that steep terrain to create the boundaries for this little neighbourhood. I'm also going to leave some of the roads as a dead end because we'll come back in a later episode and do some newer suburbs. But for now, let's get this main pattern here established so that we've got somewhere for the people to move in. The other thing I'd like to do while we're here in the neighbourhood is bring a train line through here following our grid pattern nice and early. I've put one train line from one side of the map to the other when I made it. It may annoy a few of you, but it's a one way because this is in tune with what we see in New Zealand. So I'm just going to branch off of that, run it through here so we can put a train station in from this neighborhood really easy. I'd like to make this series a little bit more building focused if I could. 
You also may have noticed that the length of these episodes is a bit longer than my normal ones. This is because I've got way more footage in each of the episodes. It will however mean that there will be less commentary because like I said I really want it to be focused on the building. But I would like to get some feedback from you guys in the comments in regards to that change. I mean, do you like it? Would you prefer the shorter content with more commentary? You know, what do you think? So this is one thing that we're not going to be able to do in City Skylines 2 for a while and that's put themed buildings down. In this case these are New Zealand residential buildings. These are going to really help make it look realistic. None of those residential buildings supplied by the vanilla game look anything like the houses we see in New Zealand so yeah this is going to work a treat. So let's spend a bit of time jamming all these in around our neighbourhood. We've got a little wee bit of commercial around this main road here and there's a couple of apartments that have been upgraded from maybe some older style buildings that were here just on the reverse side of that main block. In the last 10 years in New Zealand we've seen lots of houses really close to the middle of towns being upgraded to duplexes and fourplexes and being paid substantial money for their crappy old houses in the process. So that's going to be represented here in our build as well. Once we get one or two sort of streets or blocks away from that main road, it starts to transition into that low residential. So I've got to mention while I'm thinking about it, these houses come fully detailed as well, which doesn't sound like much, but it's actually huge and saves a lot of performance on my PC. In the series that I've done in the past, I've always added everything manually, so fences, driveways, all of that sort of thing are done with props. So you could imagine the load that sort of puts on your machine. In this series, all of these houses I'm putting down are pre-detailed, so they don't count towards the prop count, which should help me build, you know, longer and a bigger city. It's also way, way quicker to build these suburbs. You could imagine how long and painstaking it was to put all of the fences down around the properties by hand. I even chucked in the old backyard barbecue, so yeah, it was a hell of a process. So I'm hoping that without having to do that, I can focus more on the cool stuff like the port, the marina, and you know, things like the downtown and public transport and infrastructure. That's the really, really cool stuff, right? I mean, this may end up being the last series that we do on City Skylines 1, so I'm gonna do everything I can to make this the best city I've ever made. I had made the map with this sort of built-in port area that was sort of ready to go and this is the reason why we've built the suburb where we have because just across the other side of the highway we're going to start building our industrial area here in this port area. We are going to have a lot of jobs on offer down here at the port area for our citizens but I also want this to look realistic down here so we're not going to see too much of the vanilla industrial sort of zoning that we see in the vanilla game so instead I've gone onto the Steam Workshop and downloaded some big factories 
and warehouses that look a bit more lifelike. I'm also going to add in some industrial block services, we'll just slip those into some existing buildings, and we're also going to have things like a freight terminal and a cargo harbour down here. Now this isn't going to be the only port area in our entire map, this is just going to be one of them, and because of that, and because of its location, we're also going to have a lot of abandoned warehouses out here. Maybe they've moved to the port that's going to be closer to town. And I'm going to put some cliffs and stuff, which you're seeing me do now, around the back of the port area, just to give it a bit of a different backdrop. With this part of the cliff here, I kind of wanted to make it look like it had been fallen away, like it's either eroded or it's collapsed. So I'll start by mapping out where I want the cliff with the terrain tool, and then leave a little flat spot where we're going to work with. And I'm really stoked with how this comes out, I think it looks great, and it just does look a little bit different in the background, just makes you look over there and go, wow, what's going on sort of thing, which is exactly what I'd like to achieve. So with that background and the backdrop to the port all complete, let's move on to getting the area ready to build on. I need to tidy up a few of the edges here with the terrain tool and make the area a little bit smaller, it is quite large. And then before detailing anything, we'll run some roads in here.
Now we can start cleaning up the edge of the port with this key here and then put all the surfaces down like the concrete and everything else we need to to start building on. This intersection here that comes directly off the highway, this gets changed eventually but for now I want it at least to look good and work properly. So once that's done and I'm happy that traffic's going to get in and out of this area pretty well, we can start putting those buildings down, some of the big factories. The first couple we're going to put down are a post office that's based on New Zealand or a sorting facility I guess you'd call it and the other one is just a big generic factory that we're going to have about a hundred people work in and I think it's really cool that these buildings are going to have a clear purpose in game as well as they look like something you would see from this area in real life. We've got really good connections on and off the highway from here as well so hopefully that helps the truckies out. But aside from all of these factories and the roads we've already put down, a lot of the area down here at this port's just going to be left open. Lots of car parks, lots of open space, I mean that is what we'd see in real life. Things like containers and overgrown areas, lots of trucks being stored and just random stuff everywhere. And as detailed as I'm going to make this little port, this is really going to be nothing compared to the one that's going to be closer to the downtown. I've got to be careful that I don't over detail these areas that are really going to be on the outskirts of the town eventually. So I'll look for that nice balance here between realism and melting my computer. I mentioned earlier that we were going to have some abandoned areas down here and this is going to be the first one. This is an old water treatment plant that has since been moved and it's now overgrown, covered in graffiti and probably been lit on fire a few times. I just love the imperfect nature of these types of areas. When we build with the vanilla game, everything's just so pristine and almost too perfect you know you have these areas that are overgrown and people don't want to go to these places they just sort of pretend they don't exist and they offer a really good contrast to some of the nicer areas in the town.
All right, it's time to finish this bad boy off. We need concrete ASAP. I'm being sure to leave some overgrown areas here and there as well. The freight terminal's out here and ready to go, but as you can see, it's turned off, but I'm not sure why, but there's a whole lot of people using the car park already and there's nothing out here. I'm picking they just really love ports. But aside from the concrete, we're gonna change a couple of other things down here as well. I'm gonna put a different key wall in, in just a couple of places, just to make it look like it's been upgraded or that it's, you know, not all the same key. You'll also see me install a cargo harbor down here on another part of the port. And for now, I've just gone with the vanilla building, but eventually I think I'm gonna get one from the Steam Workshop that looks a little bit more realistic, but this'll do for now just to get it sort of running. Once that's in place, I'll turn that and the freight terminal on so that our workers have got somewhere to work and hopefully we can export some industry. Well, actually, it's probably worth noting that this is probably going to be more for imports. This port here's got a line running directly from the edge of the map and directly back to the edge of the map, so probably more set up for imports, actually. Maybe we could set our port area up that's closer to the downtown to be our export facility. What do you guys think? decided to zone just a little wee bit of industrial right here by the cargo harbour. If I use the marquee select just to select specific parts of the zone rather than the entire block, then I can get just little wee factories to spawn here and there. So if I only do a few here and there, they normally don't look too bad and it does help to sort that industrial demand. And I kind of figured they wouldn't look too out of place being down here. So we'll finish off this side of the port here with a bit more detail like containers and dirty decals and things like that. And then I want to move on to something really, really cool that I've never done before. car ferry terminal here, somewhere where the cars can come, drive onto a ferry, go across the bay and drive back off again. There's one of these ferry crossings in New Zealand that leaves from Wellington, it goes out the bay, across the Cook Strait and ends up going to a little town at the top of the South Island called Picton. There's everything we need on the workshop to make this happen. Admittedly, some of them are Korean assets, but we can still make that work. And the rest of it is just weaving and winding some roads, so it looks like they're giving access onto a boat as it turns up. I've never done anything like this before in City Skylines, and doing things for the first time is always really, really fun and exciting. And this was, it was heaps of fun. And it just adds another really unique attraction to the town.
Well, I'd say that's a pretty good start to the city. I think we made some pretty good progress in this episode, and in episode 2 we are going to make just as much, if not more. I'm hoping by episode 3 or 4 we're in towards the downtown and doing some of the cooler stuff. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning into my episode today, I very much appreciate it. A thumbs up on the video if you've enjoyed it would be great. Look after yourselves guys, and I hope to see you in episode 2 of Waihi. See you later.